Okay, so it seems we've got a few more people on here, and I think it's going to be safe to start at this point. So again, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Luis. I'm the Director of Customer Success at Map My Customers, uh, the field sales enablement tool. And today, as you know, as you're all joining here, we're uh, continuing the Apollo webinar series. The Apollo webinar series so far has been a general introduction as far as, you know, the latest upgrades from going from the legacy Map My Customers all the way through to the newest version of Map My Customers, as we call it, Map My Customers Apollo. And now what we're starting to do, as we've done some very general overviews, we're going to take you a little bit deeper. We're going to take you a little bit deeper into some of the more common use cases and understanding how you all can leverage some of the most popular features that we provide. And essentially, how can these features then convert to something valuable and meaningful for your day-to-day -day life? So we're going to start that out. With, with this week on today's session. So this is the first uh, one that's going really deep into things. And we're gonna go specifically into routing. As you all can imagine, being a field sales software, mobile and visual routing is gonna be extremely important to what we do. And how we provide it for you all is also gonna be very important. So understanding what routing features are available, how you can leverage routing on a day-to-day -day basis, how you can even be more flexible with how your routing works on a day-to-day -day basis. As clients may reschedule meetings, you might find new prospects, you know, all the stuff that happens in sales, uh, Map My customers will be able to help you stay organized and keep focused when you're out on the road. So we're going to go ahead and get started, and we'll go ahead and start with the mobile app. After we cover a little bit of the mobile app and how routing can be used as a really powerful tool for you all on the field sales side in the mobile app, we'll go ahead and jump into the web app. Please, any questions that you, you, you might have, just shoot it over to us kind of, you know, as, as they come up. I'll try to pick some up as I'm talking, you know, if it kind of fits in with in the context of what I'm going through. And if not, I will also try to address questions towards the very end. So now I'm going to share my screen on my phone. Great. So here you should all be able to see the Map My Customers app. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that you all can see my mouse as well so you can see me kind of navigate and as I click through the different parts of the, the application. And this in particular is the Map My Customers mobile app available to you for Android or the iPhone. At the very top, as you'll quickly see here, just a quick overview of what's available here. You have the option to click into your accounts, your contacts, or your deals. And at the very bottom is your actual navigation bar. This is where you can navigate the different parts of the actual application, the technology itself. So you have the maps, which is the map view you all see today manage to see a list view of all of your accounts, contacts, and deals, the activities to see a list of all your activities, your sales calls you prepared, and of course, routing, which is going to be today's focus. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and start out by clicking on the routing tab. But there is one quick thing to know, you know, when you land on my customers at first, you're going to see a map of all of your pins laid out for you. That's not where you actually start your route. If you want to start your route and really start building out what your day is going to look like, or just pick up on your day from a route you previously built, you would click directly into the routing tab as you see it right here. And once you click into the routing tab, you'll just see the new page populate. So at the top, you'll see a few things. You'll see where it says accounts and contacts. Uh, so one of the major changes and differences between the legacy Map My Customers and the Apollo version that you all are using today is that now you have a difference between routing to an account versus to a contact. There might be a contact that has a specific, you know, work from home or they have a different location than where the actual business is located. So depending, or, or if you're just doing door-to-door -door sales, right? Maybe you're selling on the consumer side, maybe it could be security, home security equipment, uh, door knocking. You know, if you're using that kind of sales approach or you have that as your business model, then you'll be focusing a lot more on contact-based routing rather than account-based routing. Uh, for today's example, I'm gonna focus a little bit more so on the account-based routing side of things. Just know that as I'm going through these different aspects of account-based routing, it'll also be available for the contact side. Okay, so here you see the list uh, of all the routes with the search bar. So this search bar is gonna be very helpful. As you become to be you know, more comfortable with Map My Customers, really using it as a day-to-day -day tool you can rely on, uh, you'll start adding more and more routes. The great part about the routing tool here is that you can actually build routes that you can repeat and reuse as many times as you want 
or they can be one and done and you remove them. If you continue to build a long list of routes that you continue to reuse once a month, once a quarter, or every single day, the great part about that is you can actually search for them. So the, long, you know, the longer this list might be, the easier it is to find those particular routes because you can search for a specific name, uh, a particular named route. So as you see here, we already have our first route that we had built before. But before going into an existing route, we're gonna really walk through the basics of starting to build your route from the very beginning. So we'll click right here where it says, add a new route. And once we do that, you'll see that it actually populates all your pins on the map. Uh, so this is again, the same view you saw on the, the regular map view, but now you're looking at the routing map where you can actually start focusing on building what your day is going to look like. Uh, several options are here available to you, just so that you're all aware. You have this funnel icon. We'll go into this as well, but this is the filtering option. This is how you can actually go ahead and filter to find specific types of accounts. You might want to filter by grouping, by zip code, by state. So you can really nail down the map. Right here, we have a map of the entire USA. There are accounts across the entire country. We don't need to focus on all of these. We have specific types of accounts or areas of accounts you want to see. And I'll show you exactly just how you can narrow down your scope and see just accounts within your, the area that you're at today or you want to focus on. The next button will be used just to click, you know, when you're done selecting your accounts you want to add to your route, you would click next. Search accounts, it's a very straightforward. It's the option to use our searching tool to actually find specific accounts you want to add to your route. So you would use the search accounts option whenever you might actually have an appointment already set up. So you might have a couple of anchor appointments here and there within a specific day. You want to search for them real quickly by using the search option and then add them to your route. At the bottom left, we have our lasso tool. Everybody loves a lasso. It's a very common, very popular tool. A great way to just take an area that you want to target. Say you're on the maybe more so on the prospecting side of things. You want to just cold call and you know go through an entire city, an entire area. The lasso tool is a great way to organize which account you should see in a particular order. And then lastly, uh, well, it's not just last just yet, but this option right here. This will actually find your current location. So you see right here, my demo account has this blue pin. If I click on this right here, it zooms you in. This is really nice. You can think of it like a nearby feature. It zooms you into your area and it'll show you some of the closest pins to you. And we have two right here. And then lastly, at the very bottom, as you can see here, a toggle called show all pins. This toggle is just some, something you can turn on or off, uh, just to really be able to see as you're building your route and you have your route built out, you can decide to hide all the pins on the map because you don't need to see them anymore. Or you can see all the pins again and see what other stops actually fall along the path of my route. So it's a very actually useful tool to pick up more and more stops along the way. So I'll show you how that all works uh, now as we get started. So now I'm gonna show you a couple more ways that you can go ahead and select accounts and see who you want to add to your route. Uh, so as you mentioned before, we can go ahead and search for accounts. We'll click on that. And we can search, for example, for the name Wilson. We have Wilson Dermatology Clinic. Just by searching Wilson, I can check off this box right here. And click done. And we've gone ahead and added our first stop to our account. Uh, but now let's say I want to look at things more from a geographic or a visual standpoint. What I will do then is I want to filter things out. There's way too much going on on my map right now and I don't need to see everything. I want to nail down a specific region. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a filter. I'll click on the filtering icon and choose the option to add filters. I can't emphasize enough how powerful and useful the tool can be combined with the filtering option. So please do take a note how you can leverage filtering for your own uh, particular sales approach. As you, you know, many salespeople are, they approach things based on region, zip code, territory. You know, we all have to be organized. We all have to make the most use out of our time. So one of the things that you might do here is search for an account, search for a specific list of or area of accounts based on a certain city, state, zip code, or even grouping. Um, you know, some of you may already know, groups is a very powerful concept of Map My Customers. It's how you can segment out your data, apply you know, mass filters to your accounts, where you can filter things by industry, categories, any certain type or, or segment grouping is really powerful for. 
So I could go ahead and apply a group based on a certain criteria. And that would be a really helpful way to just show me a specific type of customers or prospects on the map. But let's say that I want to take a more geographical approach to this. And I want to go ahead and apply a filter based on the zip code. So we're going to go down to the postal code. Let's say postal code contains. And now we're going to go ahead and apply a zip code 37205. And if I'm not mistaken, this particular zip code will be around the Nashville area. And there you go. As you can see, there's a giant you know, red circle. This is really just telling you that there's a lot of pins in that area. But once you zoom in there and click on it, it zooms you in further. And you see all of the accounts that happen to fall within that zip code uh, list, really. So now what you can do is kind of look and see at these accounts. Like, OK, all of these accounts fall within this, this particular zip code. You can click on it and see the name of each account really as you tap on it. So I'm clicking on each pin now after I run my filter. And now what I can do is, as you can see, I've selected this particular account. You can know it's, you know it's selected because it's highlighted green. So that's great. Now what I can do is where it says Eurofix Bell Mead, under it, it says add to route. So I can click on that add to route option. And now I've added two accounts, as it says in the bottom, to my route. So you, we've already started adding accounts to a route. We first searched for one. Now we filtered and found a specific account and we added it individually. So that is one way you can add accounts to your route on Not My Customers. You can tap on each one and add them in whatever order you want. But again, it's sometimes just easier if you have a nice little lineup like this, right? One, two, three, to just go ahead and lasso them. Click on the lasso icon at the bottom, click OK. And now we'll just draw a shape. And then we'll click next. So now we've started our route. We've added one individually. And now we've gone ahead and also done, done a lasso. Really kind of streamlining the process. You know, think about how you might do this uh, before. You might uh, try to think about or search individually. Like, hey, I have these accounts in this general state in the general city. Where do they fall in the map? You might start plugging them in one by one by one on Google Maps, or you might just go off the zip code order that. Honestly, as you can tell, the zip code can range here. This is, this is a map, as you see here, of multiple uh, accounts across a wider area of zip codes. So having actual visual context with all of that actually speeds up the process significantly for you all. Because now you can know, like, hey, if this is a key account, I'm going to spend four or five hours over here, and it's a busy city, I'm probably not going to make it to these accounts or you know just to prioritize this, this more important account or to not prioritize this account and then go to these first. So there's a lot of conceptual ways that the, you know, the visual side of things, having Map My Customers can be a very powerful advantage. All right, so we've gone ahead and gone back on John Lasso, and then we'll click Next. So now we're still building the route, but now we're doing this route setting. So we already selected the accounts we want to add to our route. Now we're focusing on the settings side of things. Where do I want to start and end my location? Uh, for a lot of you on-the-go sales reps, you know, as, as all of you are, you might just want to go ahead and do it based on your current location. So what you would do is click on this current icon, and this will pick you up right where you're at. So right now I'm in the office here in New York. It'll start and end my route based on this settings for me right in the office. So this is great if you're a sales rep because if you're starting at home, you're gonna leave from the house, you wanna start and you wanna come home. Or if you're flying into a city and you're at home preparing for your day uh, for, the, you know, for when you fly out, this can also be very helpful because if you're not using your current location, you can actually go ahead and click into the text box and search for a specific location. Uh, I, could search, I could search for really anything here. So it's a really helpful way to just figure out, all right, this is what the route is going to look like be before you actually go out on the field, wherever you actually are, are today. So it's a pretty dynamic kind of you know, user setting for routing. You have the option here to add a route name. So we'll go ahead and add this route name. Next, we'll look at the route type. Uh, so as you can all imagine and expect, all the routes are meant to be optimized. You wanna get from point A to point Z as quickly, as quickly as possible and meet all the stops you know, in between. 
The other option we do have though is the option to do in order routing. Now this is different than optimized routing uh, and in a little bit. So what in order routing is, it's still gonna try to calculate the fastest route for you, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna prioritize the pins that you selected them in the order you selected them in. So if you recall, I had showed you how you can uh, pick pins, pick accounts one by one by one by one, a little more manual. If you like that approach and you have a specific order, you need to visit accounts, using the in order route type will be much more applicable for you. But if not, and if you want to get to point A to point Z as quickly as possible from, you know, leaving at home back to home and seeing all your accounts as quickly as possible, you want to stick with the optimized routing option. You can allocate how much time you expect to spend at each stop. These are just general estimates. Uh, so you can go ahead and choose 15, 30, 45 minutes or 60 minutes. So let's go ahead and pick 60 minutes. And then choose your start time. Another great tool to have to be able to predict like, all right, if I start tomorrow at nine and I want, and I need to see all of these accounts, what time will my day end? It's a good way to understand how much you have going on in your day. So now given these settings, I'm gonna go ahead and build my route. And now we see what it looks like here. Uh, so a couple of things to point out here. Well, the account that I searched for initially, we recall I searched for a specific account. I believe it was with the name Wilson. That account was based in North Carolina. Uh, but then the other accounts that I added were of course, as I mentioned, based in the Tennessee area. So as you zoom in here, you can see what it looks like, generally speaking, just from a visual standpoint, to visit all of these accounts in order. So you go from the top account all the way through to these three and then back. So this is just an estimate of what it would look like. And then what you would do to really get a sense of what it looks like kind of step by step by step, you would scroll down. You would scroll down to where it says here, the list of each, the list of stops or the list of accounts in the order that's optimized for you. For me in particular, this is taking me from New York to all of my accounts and then back to New York. You have here the name of the account. It tells you how long it'll take you to travel from New York to this particular account. And then from account to account to account to account. And of course, say you wanna update things, you wanna reorganize your list, whatever it might be, all you would need to do is simply drag and drop. So let's say that I wanna go ahead and change American Tire to be my last stop. Great, just by tapping and dragging and dropping, you can easily change a route. If a client cancels on you, or if you're just circling an area and you have specific appointments or certain times of the day, you'll want to move your route around. And of course, you also have the option to delete. So say that I actually want to remove one of these stops. I want to remove Wilson Dermatology. I'll swipe to the left here and I'll click delete and that changes the view for you. So this, this view is now changed to go into deletion mode. Now you can start picking which other accounts you want to delete. But say that was the only account I wanted to delete and now this route is what I wanna take on for the day. I'll go ahead and click build route on the top right so that I can see again what this route is gonna look like. Go to the top, great, we've removed our North Carolina route. Oh, it's way too out of the way. Now we can see what it looks like to visit these accounts. Since now this looks good to me, I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And I'm gonna save this route because I wanna use it for the future. I'm brought back to my routing list and now I'm building on more and more and more. So now I have my first two stops, my first two routes. And I'll click on route for the webinar. It shows you that same visual again and you can scroll down and see the list of each stop in a way that's optimized and organized. So, you know, this is a really straightforward way, a little more detailed, but a really straightforward way of actually building a route and planning for your day. Now what you can do is go ahead and you see, if you see the car icon, this car icon is how you get the turn by turn navigation. Uh, so if you can click on that, for me, it's gonna take me directly to Google Maps and immediately start pushing for me to start driving. And I'm currently set to train. So anybody in the city, you might have train as a default, change to the car mode, and it'll update everything and give you the turn by turn instructions. So now going back into the application, uh, one thing to note, Google Maps is a default that we work with, but you can always change your mapping uh, app that you want to use for the actual navigation in the Map My Customers app settings. 
All right. So once you see this here, what's really great is say this is the route you want to stick with and you don't want to change anything here. Great. Just what you're looking at is perfect. You'll click on each account. You'll navigate to them. Say that you, I've gone ahead and visited Bell Mead. I want to log my sales call. I'll click into the account Bell Mead. I'll add an activity, which will track my sales call and my notes. I'll update whatever I need to update here from the account information, save it, and then go back. And now that I've gone back, I can go to my next stop. So what I personally love about my customers as a tool for anybody in outside sales, and I know that field salespeople also love it, is that it can be a really focused kind of like hit list or check of things to do throughout the entire day. And you don't need much more outside of Map My customers to just know what your day is going to look like. You can get an overview and then start executing on it as a really powerful executional tool within the routing uh, application. And now say that you want to take it the next step. Let's say that you want to go ahead and sync this information to your calendar. Uh, you can sync what this route would look like to your calendar. There's a sync to calendar option right here. Uh, and this is really helpful because it'll sync the time and the, the time, the date, and the account that you're visiting throughout the day. Um, the one thing that's important to note though with the calendar sync is that it is stagnant. So when you change sync your routing list to your calendar, what's going to happen is it's going to sync over all the stops as they are. If you actually change and reorganize the list of the stops or change the order or remove any stops from your route, that will not update. Um, so that's one thing to be very clear of. If you're going to make changes, that might not be the best way to actually use the calendar sync. I'd actually recommend that you use the other calendar sync that we have that syncs your activities from my, my, my customers to your calendar because that's real time. When you log your sales call, it'll push your calendar. So that's based on what you actually get done rather than what you actually have planned out within your route. All right, and it seems that uh, Matt Sniff, our CEO, has jumped on. I thought it was a pan I thought it was a client question or somebody asking something. How's it going, Matt? Not sure if you can hear me too well. No big deal. Um, but yes, yeah, so just that was a quick just note on the calendar syncing. At any point, as you all know, it's in sales. Things come up. Uh, one of the things that do come up frequently that does come up frequently is that you know, clients on your side or prospects, whatever it might be, they might cancel on you, reschedule. Uh, so what you wanna do is as you have this route that you work so hard to build, you can also just customize it and change it as things come up. All you would do is click the edit option on the top right, and then just start dragging and dropping and changing things, or just going ahead and deleting. But while we're on the topic of editing a route, one of the powerful things that you can do now, you have your route path at the top, now, this is what I was talking about earlier. You have the option to toggle on to show all of the other pins that you might have around the area. So this is showing it here based to, on the filter we ran earlier. If we reset this filter and apply it, now we have a lot more accounts. So we can look and see who do we have that's on the way that we might want to add to our route. And we have a couple. So we'll go ahead and add them. Great. We just, just like that, we just added two more stops to our route, you know, two more sales calls. Imagine being able to do that every single day or, you know, even just once a week over the course of a year, that really adds up. And, you know, the higher, the higher, the higher your sales amounts are per deal, the more each sales call really is worth. Now, say we want, we want to take it to the next step. Of course, you know, if you're in account management mode, you might not be doing as much prospecting, but I'm sure your boss wants you to prospect. If you're a field sales rep, on it, you know, that's focused mainly on prospecting and developing new business, there can never be enough prospecting for you. So we get that on the Mount My Customer side. And what we've introduced for you all is the option to actually use our lead generator within the routing tool. So as you can see here, we have the find leads option. You can click on that right there and it'll zoom you in to the, all the accounts that you have available for you already for the route. And now what you can do is you use the traditional lead generation map my customers tool here to actually just search for a specific industry or category or a keyword. Let's say that I wanna search for hospitals here or just doctors, let's call it doctors in the Nashville area. You'll see here at the bottom that it's loading. And then what's gonna happen here, it's gonna load up you know, several pins of doctors, here we go. 
all of the green pins that you see are the highlighted are the ones that we've already added to our stops. Whereas all the red ones are actually the new prospects that we could be visiting. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and see like, generally speaking, who can I just add real quickly here? <laughs> Check this out. A block away pretty much from this one stop I was already going to, I have literally four more doctors. This is awesome. I'm going to add all of these to my route. Like how much time is that actually gonna take for me to just visit those four doctors? I mean, if, if only one of them's there, that's that's still a win. Um, you can add a several outside of here or just go ahead and even do a different keyword search and just search for, you know, apartments and then populate uh, any of the apartments around the area. And now these leads will be a different color. There we go. Now we have blue for apartments, red for doctors. We have a couple more on our way here. Now we just added what, four or five new prospects just in the process of doing all this, that's awesome. So now we can do is scroll down, click where it says add to route and you can see a list of everybody you've added here. Let's add all of these to our route. Now when we zoom in back into the Nashville area, Look at that. This might not be optimized because we did reorder the route earlier, but you can imagine we just went from having four or even five stops now to having around 13 total stops because of using the ability to get an idea of how, which accounts are near or on already on the way up within our route and using the lead generation tool to find if other accounts really, really close by. So this is a huge win for us. While 13 may be aggressive as far as, you know, going from four to 13, again, going from four to five, four to six, four to seven, four to eight, four to 10, so always a bigger gap. But it's those incremental changes as they happen on a day-to-day -day basis that adds up on the sales math side of things. So it'll help you all really reach your goals and even exceed quota. And now we can save this. And then we back out, we have a route here for the day. So this covers all of the aspects uh, for routing on the, mo on the mobile app. I'm gonna switch over for the next 10-ish minutes to the web app. Um, but as I'm doing this transition, I will open it up a little bit here to questions. So anybody with questions, please do send them over. All right, so now we are here on the Map My Customers website app. Uh, so once you log in to Map My Customers, you'll immediately land on this page. So transitioning you know, from the mobile app to the web app, I did wanna cover mobile more in depth first, just given the nature that a lot of sales reps in the field are gonna be only looking at their phone the majority of the time. But there's of course the opportunity where you might have an office day or you might wanna plan things out on the weekend and you have a computer and you want to be able to look at things uh, more at a glance and be a little bit more strategic. So you can also go ahead and do that route building process directly from the web app. So to do that, what we would do is go to the navigation bar at the very top where it says home, accounts, contacts, deals, activities, and reports. Uh, same as we mentioned earlier on the mobile app, you can do routing for both accounts and the contacts. To start off with this, we'll go ahead and click on accounts, see the drop down we have here now, and go immediately to routes. So as you can see here, we already have the route for the webinar popping up here. This is the same account. So everything syncs pretty instant, you know, instantaneously from the mobile app to the web app. We have our route for the webinar here. Uh, so we have this route list. We can easily click on any of these routes. Let's say I wanna look at my route for the webinar that I built on the phone. I can see exactly what this looks like here. And then see the list. 
very similar setup, slightly different design because it's a bigger screen. Um, so the process itself will be very similar. You have the list of each account, address, when you get there, how you expect, how long the trip will take and how long the actual drive will take miles wise with the option that could be turn by turn navigation within get directions. Let's take it a step back and look at how you would build a route from the Map My Customers web app. We'll go ahead and toggle over to the map view. We're gonna go through this very similar scenario where we have accounts all over the country. Again, you can see this is a little bit easier to digest and take in from the web app. What we're gonna do now is gonna go ahead and apply a filter. I wanna apply a filter on the top right. This is a filtering setup here for the web app. At the middle section, in this middle, like kind of three little bars, you have the option to filter by specific fields. This is where you would run those filters that we did earlier by a zip code, for example. But separately below that, we also have a filter here for grouping. Grouping again, being how you segment and categorize your data. So let's say that I wanna go ahead and filter here. I have a group that I know of already called Georgia region. I wanna filter out all of the Georgia region accounts just to see those and I'll apply this filter. All right, so now this is showing me all of the Georgia region accounts. And now let's say that from the Georgia region accounts, I wanna see only the accounts that I have already not, that I have not built a route to already. Um, so there's an option here where it says hide pins in routes. So this is really, really powerful actually. If you're a sales rep that's really covering a specific geographic territory and you're responsible, you know, really mainly or just that, you wanna have a route built to cover each particular segment of your territory. So that's where hiding the pins in the routes becomes very, very handy because what will happen now is it'll hide out any pins from the map that you don't see at the top anymore that you've already built a route to. So definitely whenever you get a chance, check out the option to hide pins and routes um, say you want to tackle a certain zip code and there are more stops along the zip code than you could tackle on one day, but you want to add that to a separate route. That's a great way to just really focus and nail down which accounts you have not built a route to just yet. Okay, great. So all of our Atlanta, Georgia accounts here, we've highlighted as being a, a really strong blue color. Now the same way as in the mobile app, I can click on each one, add, you know, add it to a route right here. Well, this is, sorry, this is just the routing side of things. I haven't started adding my route just yet. On the top right, now that we've applied this filter and we've nailed down the scope of who we want to route to, we'll click on where it says add route. And we call this the Georgia route. And now here, this actually takes you to your route settings immediately. You can choose to optimize how long you want to spend at each stop, choose your starting and your ending location, typing a different location, you know, same as in the mobile app, and then click finish. And now it gives you a couple of instructions. And now we can do the same thing and begin to build out our route the same way as we did in the mobile app. On the top here, you can actually search for specific named accounts you wanna to visit to. So let's say that I wanna visit the CNN Center. Great, I wanna add on the CNN Center, and as you can see, it's highlighted green. I wanna add on a couple of more pins to my routes or just go ahead and use a lasso tool. Uh, but knowing that it's Atlanta, knowing how nuts Atlanta's traffic is, let's talk along the traffic view right here. Yep, as expected, I'm avoiding this entire area of Atlanta. So I'm actually gonna remove these stops. I wanna stay a little bit up more in the outskirts. So to do that, let me just go ahead and lasso them. Then now we can go ahead and build our route on the top right. Now you can see what this route will look like here from New York all the way through to the Atlanta area and all the way across all these accounts. You can scroll down here and see how long this route will take as far as miles, hours for the trip, starting and your ending point. And then just seeing here the list of your routes drag and drop to reorganize however you want. Click the trash icon to remove a stop. 
or just go ahead and click where it says rebuild route and see what this newly organized route will look like, which is now even more nuts than ever. <laughs> but yeah, this is a really easy way to just be able to get set up, you know, think things, think about things a little bit more strategically, take in some more data, click on each account and really visualize and understand which accounts you're seeing from the uh, computer levels. Uh, so you could, again, great for planning, great for preparing over the weekend, or we have an office day calling into a list of accounts and trying to schedule out your appointments. So now if this, this looks good to me, go ahead and click save routes. I have my route now built out. And just like that, when I back out right here, we have the list of our three routes that we're gonna take on for the week. All right. So thank you everybody for your time. This concludes everything for today's session uh, about the, you know, the Apollo webinar series, particularly about going more in depth about routing and how useful this can really be for you as you go through your day to day. Uh, any questions that you may have, please feel free to shoot them over to support at mapmycustomers.me. This recording will also be sent to you for the entire webinar that you can reference for yourself or for your team for the future. Thank you all. Have a great day.